Hey guys, welcome back to part 4 of bioavailability. This time we're going to talk about FG and the gut wall. More importantly, we're going to talk about defenders of the gut wall. So let's get started. Alright, when we're talking about what's going on in the gut, I'm talking about FG, we need to know a little bit about SIP enzymes. SIP enzymes are primarily found in the liver but can also be found in the stomach. Now it's important to note that not all drugs use SIP enzymes. So just because there are SIP enzymes in the gut does not mean all drugs will be affected by the SIP enzymes. They have to be substrates for the SIP enzymes. And when we say the word substrate, that's just another way of saying I use SIP enzymes, okay? So how do SIP enzymes affect bioavailability? Well the whole purpose of SIP enzymes are to metabolize drugs. Now, if a drug is a substrate for a SIP enzyme, that means it's being metabolized and not being able to continue on its journey through the gut and getting to the liver. So, SIP enzymes means metabolizing of certain drugs, okay? We do have certain things where certain drugs or certain things in the body are inducers or inhibitors of these SIP enzymes. So. Say something is inducing the SIP enzymes. We'll say drug X is inducing these enzymes. And drug Y uses SIP enzymes to be metabolized. So if we're inducing the SIP enzymes, that means that SIP enzyme is working on overtime to metabolize these drugs. So it's going, 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 metabolizing as much as it can. And that means the drug is getting less into getting through FG and getting through the liver into systemic circulation. So FG is lower, which overall means that we're going to have a lower bioavailability. Now the exact opposite is true. Alright, say we have drug B, which is a substrate, and then we have drug Y, which is an inhibitor, okay, of these SIP enzymes. If drug Y is inhibiting the SIP enzyme for, to work, that means drug B isn't getting metabolized as much. So it's able to escape on through the gut and get to the liver and get to the systemic circulation. So with decreased metabolism, we have an increase in FG. With an increase in FG, that means we have a higher bioavailability. Now there will be certain times in our clinical experiences well, we're going to want to induce or to inhibit these SIP enzymes to get another drug to be able to have less bioavailability because maybe it's causing an increase in CSS average or maybe we want to inhibit its use that way we can increase bioavailability and increase our CSS average to where we want to go. So don't forget CSS average equals bioavailability times dose rate over clearance, okay? So changes in our bioavailability is going to affect our CSS average. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Now along with SIP enzymes, we have things known as p-glycoproteins, which is also expressed as PGPs, um, or PGPs with a dash in between. Regardless, p-glycoproteins are part of an efflux transport family that's found in the gut. Their entire job description is to protect the body. Whoops didn't mean to go right through that. They want to protect the body from harmful sub substances. Their whole job is to shovel drugs back out of the gut wall and into the lumen. So that way they're not being absorbed, they're not getting to the liver, and they're not getting to systemic circulation. Think of the pig proteins as bouncers at a club or something. So originally they're just standing there and then maybe when they weren't looking, a drug sneaks by and gets into the club. The p glycoprotein looks back, see that the drug got in there and didn't like it, grabs it by its shirt and throws it out onto the street. That's exactly what the p glycoproteins are doing. They're just protecting the body and they're protecting the body from drugs getting in when they think they shouldn't. So they'll take the drugs that are getting into the gut wall, kicking them out and sending them onto the lumen to eventually just be guarded out into the feces. So just like when we talked about SIP enzymes having inhibitors and inducers, the same thing goes with the peak glycoproteins. Again, if we have drug X, which is a substrate, we have drug Y, which is an inhibitor, 
if the two drugs are given at the same time, Y is inhibiting P glycoprotein. So that means drug X is not getting metabolized. So its FG is increasing, causing an increase in overall bioavailability. Now the exact opposite is true down here. If X and Y are given at the same time, and this time Y is an inducer of the P glycoprotein, that means again that the P glycoprotein is on overdrive and that's causing an increase in metabolism. It's excited, it's like woohoo, we're going to metabolize as much drug as possible. That would cause a decrease in our FG and that would cause an overall decrease in our F. Kind of makes sense, right? Just as a heads up, if something is an inducer of a P glycoprotein, it is probably an inducer of a CYP enzyme. And just the opposite is true. If it is an inhibitor of a CYP enzyme, it is probably an inhibitor of a P glycoprotein. Just so you kind of know. Here's kind of a picture just illustrating that. Down here at the bottom, these MDR1, these are the P glycoprotein. So as you can see, they're right here trying to protect the gut wall. They want to protect things from getting into the gut wall and shoving them back out into the gut lumen to be discarded into the feces. And right here we see we also have our little CYP enzymes that are also trying to protect us. Now we will talk about the difference of what CYP enzyme 3A4 is versus up here we see 2C8 and 2C9. We'll talk about that more, than, more in a little bit. But just notice we have our little protectors down here and then we also have them up here in the liver. So let's look at an example. Simvastatin is a substrate of CYP enzymes in the gut. So if it's a substrate, that means it uses CYP enzymes to be metabolized. Grapefruit juice inhibits CYP enzymes in the gut wall. Now, if we were to administer concurrently these two drugs for three days, meaning we're giving them at the same time for the past three days, the following things will happen. The systemic exposure of simvastatin will be increased by 3.6 fold. So if the area under the curve was originally 1 and that's what we liked, now our area under the curve is up to 3.6. That's a dramatic increase. And metabolism of the simvastatin in the gut will be decreased because the grapefruit juice inhibits the CYP enzyme. So that means we're decreasing the metabolism here. And by decreasing the metabolism, we're increasing our FG which means we're increasing our overall bioavailability. So, kind of just what I said right here. And if so, this can be very dangerous because this can cause serious side effects that are harmful to a patient, which is exactly what we don't want to do. This can cause rhabdomyolysis. So it's our job as pharmacists that when we see a patient getting something like simvastatin, to ask them, hey, do you drink a lot of grapefruit juice? If so, this is what can happen. And this would be a great time for an intervention, guys. All right, that's really all I have for you for bioavailability of the gut. I hope that kind of explained things. I know there's a lot going on there with CYP enzymes and P-glycoproteins, but just take it one piece at a time. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Thanks for listening, guys.